Let's break this down and look at a couple of factors. First of all, what is noise? Put simply, any unwanted sound is noise. Commonly, noise is an annoying sound or tone that causes mild to major discomfort, distraction or irritation. We experience background sound throughout our daily lives, but noise is the sound that penetrates through the ambient sound. It is often described as annoying, unpleasant or loud. It can relate to a single event or be more persistent. Our perception of sound is influenced by what we are doing and the nature of the source itself. For example, if we're sitting in the garden reading a book and our neighbour starts mowing their lawn, we may be a bit irritated, but because we like them and we know they put up with us cutting our grass, we're not likely to be annoyed by the sound. However, if we live near to a factory, which looks rather ugly, emits in loads of smoke, and is the destination for a high volume of heavy vehicles trundling along the main road near us all day, we probably aren't too happy about being close to its operations. If the trucks pass our home regularly, rumble and cause vibrations, and we're already unhappy about the factory, our perception of the truck traffic will be as a source of unwanted sound or noise. What contributes to aircraft noise? Aircraft noise is linked to a couple of main factors, the aircraft themselves, their airframe and engines, and the expansion of the aviation industry. Overall, individual sound levels produced by aircraft have reduced over time due to source changes related to successful improvements to airframe and engines. However, the number of aircraft operating, that is the volume of air traffic has increased and flight paths have also changed. And it's this exposure to aircraft sound that most people regard as noise. Also, when we talk about noise, we need to distinguish between sound generation at source and exposure on the ground. That is, sound propagation may vary with distance from the source, weather, weather conditions, and may be influenced by buildings and other structures nearby. In addition, different operational modes, that is changing the direction of takeoffs and landings for safety reasons linked to wind direction can radically affect the distribution of noise on the ground around an airport as the location of flight operations change. So if we summarize, noise is unwanted sound. It is a problem as it can disrupt activity and have detrimental effects on humans. Sleepy sounds and the noise have been identified as the most frequently occurring negative impacts of aircraft noise exposure, and they are related to further health outcomes. How do we collect information about these responses and relate them to noise exposure? What are noise annoyance and sleep disturbance, and how are they assessed? Noise annoyance is a response to noise that includes three aspects. Experiencing repeatedly disturbance and trying to cope with it, responding emotionally, like feeling anger, and having the distressful insight that one cannot do much against this unwanted noise situation. Noise annoyance is measured in surveys by means of a questionnaire. There are international standardized questions for the assessment of the degree of an individual's noise annoyance, like that on the slide in the background. Sleep disturbances include, for example, difficulties falling asleep and awakenings during the night and wake up by the noise in the early morning. Sleep disturbances can be measured physiologically and psychologically. Physiological measurements include, for example, the assessment of multiple bodily functions and reactions measured simultaneously throughout the night. Another way to assess sleep disturbance is by asking people about their sleep, the quality and noise-induced disturbance of the sleep. How are these noise responses, that is the noise annoyance and sleep disturbance related to noise exposure? Usually so-called exposure response curves are used that provide the information of how many percent of people report a high degree of annoyance and sleep disturbance at a given sound level. In prediction models, the percentage of highly annoyed and highly sleep disturbed people is then related to levels of aircraft noise exposure, usually expressed in terms of average sound level metrics 
modeled for the home address of residents, like the day, evening, night level or the L night. Why are there differences in people's responses to noise? People are not all uh, equally annoyed by the same noise source at the same noise level. There are several possible reasons for this variety in responses to noise of a given noise level. The usually used average sound level metrics do not cover the whole acoustical characteristics of aircraft noise people are responding to. And second, there are other personal and contextual factors influencing people's uh, noise, such as the individual, individual noise sensitivity, attitudes towards the noise source, or the greenery of the environment. These factors are called non-acoustic factors. So to summarize, noise annoyance and sleep disturbance are the most frequent health outcomes of noise. The average sound levels alone might not be sufficient to capture the effects of noise, exposure, and other metrics focusing on the single noise events or emphasizing the number of events should be considered too. And it is important to address non-acoustic factors in noise management strategies as well. Noise affects the nervous and hormonal system, causing stress. As a result, prolonged exposure to aircraft noise may cause long-term adverse health effects. Annoyance and sleep disturbance can be acute, short-term, and chronic, long-term effects, but also have an important role as mediators in the development of other long-term health outcomes like cardiovascular changes. For example, hypertension can be caused via a direct effect of noise on blood pressure or via a mediated effect of being highly annoyed or experiencing chronic sleep disturbance, especially if the aircraft noise exposure is high during the night. Aircraft noise can also affect cognitive functioning in children, for example, reading comprehension. In one study, a two month delay in reading ability was associated with a 20 decibel increase in noise exposure. Compared to this, reading development is delayed for six months in children from families with low versus high socioeconomic status. Also, reading development delays of up to eight months have been found among children with limited access to books, as compared with those who can access plenty of children's books at home. However, the delay resulting from aircraft noise is not negligible, especially for an influencing factor not directly related to reading. Also other mental health outcomes such as depression can be associated with aircraft noise exposure. And the causality is less clear. The diversity of studies in terms of study methods and the variability of results make general conclusions difficult. Uh, there is potential for methodological improvements to strengthen the quality of evidence. For example, a wider range of acoustic metrics should be considered to better characterize noise events and changes over time. And also non-acoustic factors play an important role that has not been considered enough until recently. Even small effects should be considered in this case. Aircraft noise may facilitate the development of cardiovascular disease. And this is important as we know that globally, cardiovascular diseases represent the top four causes of death and reduced life quality. High blood pressure is leading risk factor for all cause mortality. And uh, important findings of the recent Swiss national cohort study around Zurich airport suggest that nighttime aircraft noise can trigger acute cardiovascular mortality. 
Therefore, it is important to control the level of aircraft noise, especially during the night, to provide healthy and better quality of life to citizens exposed. Since the 1970s, ICAO has controlled individual aircraft noise by setting increasingly more restrictive emission limits, and 20 years ago adopted the so-called balanced approach to support the industry in managing the negative impact of aircraft noise around airports. The balanced approach consists of identifying the noise problem at a specific airport and analyzing the available measures to reduce noise through four pillars. First, reduction of noise at source, encouraging the use of less noisy aircraft. Second, land use planning and management to prevent encroachment of incompatible land use in areas of high noise exposure or to provide some insulation. Third, noise abatement operational procedures to minimize the overfly of sensitive areas, increasing the distance or the altitude of the planes and reducing some levels on the ground. And finally, if there are still problems, the airport and established authorities can introduce operating restrictions to reduce noise. And I must suggest that the balanced approach should focus on reducing aviation impact. The balanced approach regulation requires member states' authorities ensure that airports with a noise problem and more than 50,000 movement, movements establish reduction objectives uh, per airport and develop noise action plans following the four priorities of the balanced approach. Furthermore, the Environmental Noise Directive defines a common approach to avoid and reduce the harmful effect of environmental noise exposure. It requires the states to define the noise objectives and limits for their territories and oblige the all airports affecting agglomerations and all over 15,000 movement, movements to three things. Prepare strategic noise maps to understand and limit the extent of noise impact, to manage environmental noise issues by developing an action plan to reach the objectives established, and to keep informed and consult the public during these processes. And I must suggest that the smaller airports should be included under the scope of the regulatory framework. The implementation of balanced approach measures represents a complex challenge for all airports, owing to the wide range of influencing factors that can determine what is feasible and viable for an airport to do. Whilst airports have traditionally done well at understanding technical factors, there has been less focus on the consideration of those stakeholders who such measures ultimately aim to serve, noise exposed residents. This spans the entire process of balanced approach implementation, from the design and selection of measures to their application and the evaluation of any associated outcomes. This is important because as the um, ultimate beneficiaries of management measures, it is essential that resident perspectives are considered and that any changes to airport activity are communicated to them clearly and early. Airports are therefore required to clearly articulate their plans to affected communities, but to also listen to and engage with community needs, concerns and their lived experiences. Doing so empowers airports with more information on which to base decision making by ensuring that resident considerations are effectively incorporated into those decision making processes and that they can understand the rationale for any actions undertaken. Failure to do so can result in residents not understanding or valuing what has been undertaken and in worst case scenarios could even lead to mistrust. What Anima has shown is that the future of noise management requires impact focus and thus citizen-centric approaches based on a comprehensive understanding of community values and concerns that can inform on the design and delivery of noise management measures or, for example, contributions to well-being through quality of life initiatives. This means not just speaking to residents, but providing them with the opportunity to provide genuine input into the design, delivery and evaluation of different noise management measures for example, the location of flight tracks. This is why we created an Anima methodology for noise management that helps to guide airports through the process of effective impact management, including stakeholder considerations at each stage. Whilst being broad and flexible enough to be applied in any setting, doing so is not an easy process. It can take time and communities and airports may not always agree on one course of action. 
However, through transparent processes in which decision-making is clearly communicated, airports are more likely to arrive at responsible and valued approaches to noise management in the eyes of the residents who those processes aim to serve.